Hi. So today our tutorial is going to be basic drawing commands. Uh, these are all the basic drawing tools that we are going to use to create our drawings. But I'm just going to introduce to you how to work with these specific tools out here. Now you see the layout looks a little different from the ones that we've done before. And all I have done is gone down here and instead of AutoCAD Classic, I have used uh, 2D drafting annotation. But you could always even use this uh, AutoCAD Classic and just toggle between both of them. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the same one which is by default it opens up in 2D drafting annotation so that's what I'll be using for this particular exercise and I'm going to start working here so for this exercise I'm going to uh, use uh, the same template that we have used before I go file new and I scroll down to pick up uh, tutorial IMFG that's mean my drawing is in inches and it's a manufacturing drawing and uh, I go to my model space and this is where I'll be drawing. So starting with the line tool, there are a couple ways of doing the line tool. Is One is just clicking on the tool that you see and just keep clicking. Read the command panel, read the next steps right next to your cursor. See it says specify next point and I just keep going till I want to stop. The second I want to stop, all I have to do is hit, hit escape. Okay, And if you look down here, the command line is empty okay that means you are out of the command now you can input any other command that you want and uh, go so on and so forth so uh, either I could access the line command from here or the second way of doing the same thing is by using the lisp command where I type L and hit enter and then it's, it goes exactly to the same thing okay now using the lisp command is a lot more faster because you always have one hand on the keyboard and it is more efficient so if you want to work fast be more efficient use get used to the keyboard rather than trying to look for the different tools that you are trying to look for because even looking and trying to search for these tools takes a little time right because you have to look and find and you move your eyes from your drawing so it's always a good habit to use the list command and uh, type L instead of going in here now let's go to the next command that we have it's uh, called the arc now if I see the small little drop down thing right here there's so many different types of arcs that we could be using starting with the three point arc what basically that means is uh, it, it starts at one point and go to the next and ends on the third point okay so you can uh, use this arc for maybe if I want to draw a circle right here okay I can use arc click on the first point maybe click somewhere in the middle and go to the third one okay so I finished using my arc for creating my little semicircle that you see over here now uh, the list command for arc is just the letter A and I hit enter and I can start drawing and it goes back to the same exact command so in here you see this where it says center so I can uh, specify the center point and now either I can specify uh, the end point if I want it so I will have to type E hit enter and uh, I specify the end point just by a click and now I can give an angle direction or a radius so right now maybe I will give it a radius as maybe two and hit enter so that's what it did it made my arc for me so uh, you could use all these different types of arcs that are there you just have to follow the instruction like this is the start then the end and the angle this is pretty much what we did right now then it's the start the center and the length so I can click on that I start over here uh, it's asking me specify the center point of the arc I'll specify it somewhere right there and now it's asking me specify the length of the cord right so I can specify the length as maybe 2 in this case and hit enter so it gave me my little arc with respect to the cord dimension so you can go in and try all these different ones but I'm just gonna leave it at there right now so the next one I'm going to move to is 
the circle command. Now the circle you use quite a bit. Now again, even this has a little fly out if you see so many different types of circle. But this is the one that comes in by default. Either I could click there or type C onto my computer and get to the same command. So I'm going to make one circle. I can make another circle. Make another circle. Okay. <coughs> but when I'm working with the circle command, see what it asks me for. So you always have to read the command line. I go in the circle command. It asks me to specify the center point for the circle. So I specify the center point. Now by default, uh, AutoCAD goes into the specify radius of the circle mode. Okay, sometimes I want to put in a diameter instead of a radius. Right, you see down here? So then for doing that, I do one extra little step where I type D and hit enter. Now it's asking me to specify the diameter of the circle. You can give it as 3 and hit enter. So it made a circle with a diameter starting from the top till here, right? With a diameter of 3. I could do the exact same thing by doing the circle and by default as I said it's radius right but instead of 3 I'm gonna type this time what half of the diameter which is 1.5 hit enter and that is still the same exact circle over here I used the radius command over here I used what I used the diameter now if you go look into here I have the same exact option where I could go in the center diameter, right? Just hit the center and I can input the diameter. I could go in here, there's a two point circle. Now, where could I use the two point circle? I have a point here, I have a point here, and that did my circle, right? I have to pick two points. I pick a point here and I pick a point there. So a lot of time you'll be using this uh, particular uh, exercise where you would be making a circle with just two points. It's a lot more easier because you don't need to calculate the distance. All you do is click one point and the other point and it makes the circle for you. So it's pretty cool. So you could use the other one called as a three point circle where again I have to give three points. I get one point here, one point there and the third point here okay so it's really simple so you just use it a couple of times play around with the tool and you get comfortable with it and uh, last one that we see is uh, the the tan 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 command that over here so I'm gonna make a circle a tangent from this one the second tangent and the third tangent you see what it did it was so easy to make the circle so I have three circles I use the tangent for those three of them and it makes this circle up for me okay so I hope you're following this exercise so far if you have any questions again you can always feel free to ask me let's go to the next command which is called uh, as the ellipse now the ellipse command works pretty much close to the circle but uh, I have uh, two uh, I get the center and then I get two endpoints right this is uh, the width of my ellipse and that is the height of my ellipse right in the circle I just had to give one and give a radius over here I have how many radius one and then that's two so that's why I have to click two times so I click on it give the center of the ellipse the end point of the ellipse and the width of the ellipse right okay so that was pretty easy so let's go to some more commands that you see over here this is a polyline it's really similar to the line but I'll tell you what the difference is when I use the line tool I keep going and every time I do this it makes individual lines for me one two three four and five but sometimes you don't want that you want everything to be in one go right so I use the the poly uh, the P line which is a poly line and I try to do the same thing and see what happens when I'm done with my command if I go over here it's just one piece and a lot of times you would be using the poly line to hatch something and to hatch boundaries and stuff like that so again uh, efficient tool which we use quite a few times so all it does it makes one piece instead of making 
uh, 50 different lines. Okay, I can keep going, and whenever I touch it, you see it's just one piece. I can always modify these by using the grips, moving it around. Okay, so let's get on to the next one. This is the rectangular tool. Now I can click on it and just give it a start corner point and the end corner point or I could even give in uh, the dimension and I could use my keyboard for doing the exact same thing rather than going and looking for it so I can type REC okay enter specify the first corner point uh, I'll give it a first corner point and for the second point uh, I can give it a number as in 5 you see so it made the rectangle do the same thing <coughs> specify the first point and now I'm gonna give a number like 3 comma 3 enter so it made an exact square with a distance of 3 comma 3 so that's what the rectangle tool was about now we have a few more over here uh, I think I might have to go to part 2 of this lecture so let's get on to the next command called as hatch in fact, you know what? I'll do hatch in a little bit. Let's go to another one going down here. So we did the line. We did the P line, which is a polyline, or the shortcut for that is PL. We did the rectangle for REC. Now let's do the spline. Now I want to make a line which is not straight, but I want to make a line that has little curves to it. So in that case, I go down here and click the spline, or I can type SP. Uh, specify the first point, specify the next point, third point, fourth point, I keep going, right? Just like the line tool. And then when I'm done with what I wanted to do, I'll hit enter one time, two time, three times, okay, to get out of the command. So again, how to use that is just go in here, click the spline, go one, maybe two, maybe three, touching that, going here, touching that one, and that's it. Now to end my command, I have to hit enter how many times? One, two, and three. Okay? So that was the spline command. You could use for drawing some waves or drawing some designs, some patterns, and stuff like that. Something that is uh, like organic shape, right? So let's go to the next one called as the polygon. Now the polygon as the name says it's uh, more than how many sides? Okay, it's more than three sides, right? So I click on it and enter the number of sides. You can look down here. Right now it's on four, so if I try to make the polygon, it's going to be what shape? It's pretty much going to be a square, right? So <coughs> I'm going to give maybe uh, five sides and hit enter. They say specify the center of the polygon. Now I give the center of my polygon right over here. It's asking me is it inscribed or circumscribed about the circle. As in it's inside the circle shape or is it outside the circle shape. So I'm gonna go just inscribe right now. And it's asking me specify the radius. So I give it the radius of 2 and hit enter. Okay, so now it made a polygon right from that center, the radius 2, just thinking this was a circle outside, that's why we use uh, circumscribed. Okay, and then it did that for us. I could add some more points or more sides. Instead of 5, I'm going to take it 10 this time, hit enter, uh, give it a center, and this time I'll take circumscribed. Okay, see, it's outside the circle and I'll give it a distance or a radius as 3 and hit enter. So see it does all the job for us, it does the calculation, it makes life a lot lot more easier. So this is what we have in this exercise. I'm going to continue this exercise in uh, tutorial number 2 for basic drawing commands where I will be covering the rest of these tools that you see over here. So stay tuned. Thank you.